Mark Cavendish, the monkey of man, the guy who mistreated the mechanics who worked for him, the guy who urged Lance Armstrong in the strongest terms to confess his doping in 2012, only to join him ten years later to swindle millionaire cyclists on Spanish islands. One of cycling's most ridiculous characters, still racing at the tender age of 39 to try to beat an absurd record of Tour de France stage wins by the doped Belgian dinosaur beloved by generations of cycling fans. To achieve this goal, the sprinter, who is a close friend of the doper George Incapi, is preparing, in all places, in Greece. Land of famous and infamous dirty athletes, when he's there together with his trusted trainer, Vasilis Anastopoulos, the guy who was able to revive this shy, retiring fast man in Patrick Lefebvre's stable, and who has now been signed by Alexander Vinokurov's Astana in order to grab some headlines and get someone with money to sponsor the worst team in the world tour, since Michele Ferrari no longer prepares the Kazakh team's athletes. Now, fortunately for the doped 2012 Olympic champion, this year, in 2024, he has the sponsorship of Italian Trattoria, a company dedicated to the Giro d'Italia champion in waiting's favourite delicacies. Dirty, greasy, mouth-watering pizzas that would make many of this Humble Channel subscribers drool uncontrollably. Sadly, for the cyclist caught cheating in the 2007 Tour de France, even this odd sponsor is covered in doping, because Vinokurov's life, since he was part of the mythical 1998 casino of drug dealer Rodolfo Massi, is full of drugs and vials and syringes, and even his sponsors seem happy to join in. The last of them has been caught with mechanical doping, a hilarious story that you deserve to hear about and explains an awful lot about who runs and shapes this sport. The junk food restaurant chain Italian Trattoria is run by a typical guy of Italian origin, an alpha male with plenty of money who thrives on a youthful appearance despite being older than a forest. We're talking about the so far unknown to the general public Giovan Battista Iera. A former amateur cyclist, 53 years old and with French nationality, despite his clear Italian origins. A man who has even participated in several films as an actor, and performed in films nominated for the prestigious César Awards. In other words, it's a guy who has plenty of money, who doesn't have to work because thousands of people already do it for him in a disreputable business, and a man whose hobby for the last two or three years has been able to get on a bicycle and crush other millionaires and playboys of his age to prove that he's the best on the planet. Just like that old man swindled by the white Kenyan who loves to wear his jerseys of world championship wins that nobody's really interested in. Well, this yuppie had a dream not only to prove that he was the best over 50 cyclist in the world, but also to break into the world of professional cycling. And to do so, he pulled in some personal contacts who introduced him to two of the shadiest guys in cycling, at least in the last 25 years. There was the aforementioned Mark Cavendish and Alexander Vinokurov. Joe Iera is one of those guys who doesn't care about the doping past of multiple cyclists since he had no qualms boasting about having trained with mega-doper Oscar Sevilla during one of his boring afternoons as a millionaire. Of course, then, there was taking rides with Vino boasting about the Kazakhs' great achievements, like that Welter Espana that was conquered, or the Liège that was bought from the doped regent of hotels full of hypoxic chambers. Now, the Kazakh evidently is not an idiot, and when he saw that walking wad of French banknotes, he decided to leave a little space on the sleeves of the Astana team jersey, a space that could be occupied by his millionaire friend's chain of junk restaurants. Joe Iera had fulfilled one of his dreams. He finally entered the world of professional cycling. So why is his presence now soiling the already dirty blue jerseys of the Central Asian team? It wasn't enough for Joey Era to ride with the British world champion on a bicycle as if they were lifelong friends. It wasn't enough for him to be a relatively successful businessman and a performer on a global level. He wanted more. He wanted to be applauded all over the world as a healthy guy, someone who contributed his money to cycling in a philanthropic way. 
And so for this, he participated in cycling master events, where the only interest was to earn money with the excuse of promoting healthy sport among people who were beginning to have cholesterol problems. Joey Era had won in multiple competitions, and he also had the support of Vino. And so he was preparing like never before for one of his main objectives of his campaign, the Route de l'Oise, a race held in the French département of Haute-de-France. There, all the riders will be over 40 years old. Among 50-year-olds like him, there's a certain level of prestige. Iero was shining in the competition in the ranks of his own team, Asse Bellon, sponsored by Italian Trattoria itself, and which has one of the best South American riders of the last 50 years in its ranks, the legendary Miguel Ubeto, a 48-year-old Venezuelan who tested positive for Endurable in his only campaign in the World Tour back in 2013, when he was part, wait for it, of Jose Antonio Fernandez's match in Sonia Duval team. I wonder where they are now? Now this Miguel Ubeto, consummate cheater and doper, is not only Joey Era's best friend in this amateur racing team, he's also part of Vinokurov and Cavendish's Astana as a recruitment officer for possible signings in South America, as if they hadn't had enough with the Coconut Oil Lopez case. In other words, Iera put up the money, Ubeto the talent, and Cavendish and the Greek trainers and Vinokurov everything else. And then we're surprised that guys like Vicente Bel de Garcia were part of this team of cycling bastards. The fact is that Joey Era, like everything that moves around him, has been caught cheating. But not just any old cheating, one related to a motor on a bicycle. This guy who bragged about ridiculously healthy food and boasted of a better-than-yours lifestyle at 53 years of age, based on not working and living off rents, well, it was all a lie. The Route de Loise organization clearly saw in photographs that the era's bike was rigged. And even though he was in a decent third place, they decided to go and check his steel horse at the end of the final stage of the race. Iera found out about this in time and decided to do something that increases his legendary status even more. He decided to run away like a madman, maybe inspired by his movies as a third-rate actor, or maybe inspired by the young delivery boys who get on motorbikes with clear problems in the exhaust pipe, jumping red lights to deliver their disgusting pizzas in double-quick time. Joe got into his private van and pushed the throttle even harder than he did on his motorized bike, which they claim could have been a Van Rysel. And then he had the misfortune of running over the race director, Francis Lenormand, who pulled out in front of one of Vinokurov's motorized vehicles. Iera continued to press the accelerator and dragged Monsieur Lenormand for 300 mètres, yes, 300 meters, injuring his knee and ankle. <laughs> it seems unbelievable, but it happened. And in a race that nobody really cares about, whose economic prizes are ridiculous. Now, if this kind of thing can happen in these kinds of competitions, well, imagine what could happen in professional sport where hundreds of millions of euros are involved. Will Mark Cavendish, who surely knew nothing about this, ask Iera to confess in the strongest possible terms, just like he did with Lance? Will Vinokurov come out to criticize this dirty, doped man in a press conference? Will anybody in authority be demanding Giovanni Battista's head on a plate? I think we all know the answer.